We're continuing with our coverage at the VMO Metals and Mining Conference. And joining me now is Randy Smallwood. He's the CEO of Silver Wheaton. Randy, good to have you back on the show. Good to be here, Danielle. Thank you. you. Well, let's start off by talking about your company. I know results are coming uh, out at the end of March for you guys, but agreement amendments were made earlier this year with mm-hmm. uh, Barrick for its Pasqua Lama Mine. So let's start uh, talking about... Sure. It's, um, you know, uh, Barrick, as they're continuing their work their way towards, uh, um, you know, advancing Pasqua Lama, they, uh, they wanted a bit of extra time in terms of uh, having to bring that project on, and so they approached us and offered uh, uh, some silver from the other mines that we get silver from down there as compensation for it. So, yeah, we've extended the delay about three and a half years, and we get another year and a half of silver production from, from Veladero. And so, so, you know, we're always willing, these are partnerships, and we're always willing to work with our partners, and I think it's just a good example of a strong partnership. It's a great asset. Now, I mentioned that your results come out end of March. Uh, I know you can't really talk on them, but how's it going so far for you guys? Well, our, our production forecast for 2014 was about 36 million. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, you know, it's, it, it was a good year. I, I can't really get into it too right, much more than right. that, but uh, obviously silver prices uh, and, and gold prices to a lesser extent uh, haven't been doing what we wanted to, so that's uh, obviously had an impact. But, uh, but overall, production-wise, we have a really strong asset portfolio, good, good high quality assets, and so they've delivered. So how are you dealing with the volatility in the silver and gold prices? Well, it, uh, it opens up opportunities for us, and especially in the silver side, which is, which is more volatile. Uh, more volatile means that if you're buying at the bottom, and we do believe we're very close to a bottom here right now, there's just not a lot of space down. The mines can't produce the metal for much lower than where the commodity prices are right now. You see, you see that across the board in both silver and gold. And so, um, so we like silver because it's more volatile. It usually means it outperforms on the way up too. So this is a good time for us to be making investments. Uh, we see the same in gold. We do think we're near a bottom. Good time to make it and take advantage of this, this volatility. We do think there's more space up than there is down. It's just gonna be a while before it actually gets there. Okay, so you think we're at a bottom for silver, so a good buying opportunity for investors? Or? Yeah, and I actually think we're very close to a bottom on gold too. I just, there's, again, when you look at this, how much it costs to produce silver and gold, there's not enough space below where we are right now. The, the, mines, the, the mining companies aren't making money. You're seeing mines shut down. You're seeing there's very little capital going into the ground right now, and at the same time, the mines are continuing to be depleted. There's good, strong, firm foundation here on the supply side for, for commodity prices. And, and how is the continued strength of the U.S. dollar affecting miners? Oh, well, it obviously, uh, uh, when you sit and look at it in U.S. dollar terms, it's tough on commodity prices, and so it does generate. Now, if you're uh, fortunate enough to exactly. be in, in, a, in a country that has a currency that's uh, doing well, then you should see benefits in the cost. I know our, our Australian friends are doing very well. Even in Canada, we're seeing a benefit in terms of the weaker Canadian and Australian dollars from costs. But uh, for us, all of our contracts are done in U.S. dollars, and so uh, we, you know, we get ounces delivered to us and we sell. So we don't see the benefit directly in ours. But if our partners are healthier, we're healthier. And we're here at the BMO conference. You're a CEO of a mm-hmm. silver company. Um, what's the sentiment like for you compared to last year, Andy? Well, it's uh, Monday morning at <laughs> 9 It's still it's too early to tell, right? Uh, so maybe at PDAC yeah. we can assess it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a, a sense of, you know, it's, it's a, there's a sense of hope. There's a sense of strength. There's, you know, I think that people that are here now are people that have survived through some pretty tough years going forward. But we do see opportunity coming up. And, uh, and you know, the strong U.S. dollar is a, is a challenge. But uh, we just don't see that as being a long-term sustainable scenario. And so, so when that changes, uh, we'll all be the ones that are here. The, we'll be the best set for that. And I guess that to, to sum it all up, what's your main focus for 2015 for Silver Weeds? And- I'll continue to look for new opportunities, high quality opportunities. Okay. We haven't seen any high quality opportunities for a long time. Uh, we are starting to see some high quality opportunities come through. So, what, what's uh, your criteria checklist? What does it need to well, We want assets that are in the bottom half of the respective cost curve. It comes down to operating costs and operating margins, operating costs. We want them to be in the bottom half of the respective cost curve. It's very, very important for us. Randy, on that note, I wish you continued success. All the great. best. Have a great conference. And thanks for watching our coverage here from the BML Metals and Mining uh, con- Conference. We'll have more for you in the upcoming days. So be sure to stay tuned to Kiko.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.